here's the first part of what's going to take us from our Super Cub LP all the way up to something that's going to have even the big plane guys turning their heads to see what a foamy can do. First thing I did was I measured an inch and a half in from the trailing edge and about three quarters of an inch out from the crease on either side of where the dihedral point starts. Just marked a line in there. Next step, I'm going to cut both sides right out of here and then I'm going to decide how big I want to make my flaps versus how big I want to make my ailerons. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. All right. Now we've got a roughly a 20 inch long piece here. So I'm going to cut it just about in half. I'm going to mark it at 10. Square it off here. Yes, that's 10. You got to read this side because it's starting at 1. Don't fool yourself. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> Double check, triple check. Make sure that we are even. And we are. Now we'll just square these from our cut edge since we straight edged that. And we're ready to split these pieces. <clears throat> which will make our flap and our aileron. Now, I've been using knives a lot. I'm a little faster and a little straighter than some folks. I recommend using some kind of a straight edge. Good sharp blade helps as well. So now we've got our flaps and our ailerons. In just a few minutes we'll do some hinging. For now, since our ailerons have to both move up and down, we're going to cut a small bevel which will allow them to travel that way. Otherwise it's just square and it's going to lock up. For our flaps, they're only going to have to hinge on the bottom because they're only dropping down and leaving it square like this will give it a nice solid point to snap back to and lock in place giving it its original shape. All right, now that we've got our strapping tape hinges in place, you can see our flaps stop when they're coming up all the way, and we'll have them set up probably on a two-way switch, rather a two-position switch. And we just have to put our strapping tape on this hinge, but I wanted to show you, you don't want to leave this rough like this. You want to sand it first. That's what I did with this side. And then we'll put our strapping tape hinges on and we'll be good to go. Next, after I get this hinge taped, I'm going to cut a score in here and notch it out for a carbon spar. We're going to be putting a lot more force on this wing and you don't want it folding on you. All right, now that we have our carbon spar, uh, the notch cut out, carbon spar is glued into place with some hot glue, and then I went over this with uh, the clear duct tape, this woven reinforced tape, just to make triple sure. Now, no matter which way we put pressure on this wing, it's solid. Now, we're going to measure out and mark out some spots for our servos. We're going to have one on each flap and one on each aileron. So I'm going to get to that, get it all measured out, marked out, cut the squares out for the servos, and even notch out for their wires so they'll sit flush inside this wing. All right, now I made a little template so it was easier and I just could square it off and pop it into place depending on which spot I was at. So all our servos are ready to get glued in, they're all dry fit. Make sure they're going to sit flush once the glue is applied and they're sticking in there. We've got notches cut out for our wires so everything sits flush as far as that is concerned. And I'm going to have to get an extension or a larger, rather wider Y harness for my aileron servos. But we can get these glued into place and we'll be good to go as far as that is concerned. Now when I glue these in place, I'm going to tilt them just slightly so that it's easy to get this screw out if ever I want to change this control arm. 
Okay, now that our servos are glued into place, I put a little bit of this tape over the top. It's not doing anything really structurally, but it's going to be easier later on because I'm going to monocoat the entire plane. That'll help for the monocoat to stick, and that way everything that's seen is this little tiny slot here on each servo. Now I've already gone ahead and taken a square and just kind of eyed up where my control horns are going to have to be for ailerons and flaps. And now I'll show you real quick how I make a control horn out of one of these wide popsicle sticks and some of this reinforced tape. Good pair of scissors. I'm just going approximate here. I always say if you're going to be wrong, let it be long. So we'll just cut a couple of these, get rid of this waste piece in our scrap wood pile. Use that for repairs later. Now I just carefully poke through. Now I'm just kind of eyeing this. It's going to be glued and fixed and repaired and made to look pretty again. Just big enough here to make our control horn. Now, I only want a little tiny bit exposed. So that's all I'm going with. And I'll drill a hole in and that'll be perfect for that flap. It's only going to need so much motion. So now that I have that piece figured out, and I think that's probably a good length for all of them, I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark the top side of the wing. Rather, mark this edge where it meets the top side of the wing, the top of that flap. Then I'm going to cut four even pieces. So they'll already be set so that they sit flush with the top and I can put a little dab of glue top and bottom. So I'll get these made up and you'll get to see what they look like. Basically, the way I do my control horns is I'll take my piece and sit it with just a little lip overlapping on three edges. Bring that right over. Bring your large end right around to wherever it's going to fall. Press this together on both edges. Now, one end is going to be glued in, so we cut this right off flush. This end here is not, so I'm going to cut that and try to leave about a sixteenth of an inch where it's stuck together. Believe it or not, that sixteenth of an inch will make a heck of a lot of difference once we drill a hole in here that's going to hold this stick together. Now, you can go with this style control horn. I've used plenty of them. I keep reusing them. But, if you don't want to spend the money, I'll tell you a package of these pop sticks, which is twice this amount, is only like three dollars. You can probably even find it cheaper. Well, there's your super tip of the day: how to make a control horn. Now, drill a hole. Well, here we are. All four of them are in place. We've just got to drill our holes, and then I have to cut a push rod for each one. All right, folks. Well. That's it for this week. We've got our carbon rod glued in and everything's all set with that. Nice strong wing. Our four servos for our ailerons and our flaps are mounted. Got the Y harness attached. Everything's all set here. The only thing I know I'm going to need, which I have sitting on the side, is a servo reverser for one of my two flap uh, servos. Uh, this is basically ready for monocoat. So, next week, we're going to cover the installation of the motor, uh, making room in our battery box to be able to fit a 3-cell, 2200 milliamp, uh, 30C battery. Uh, we're going to be installing a 30-amp ESC, and we will install and bind our AR6200 um, spectrum receiver, as well as install our elevator and rudder servos. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, ask any questions if you want to. Leave them right down at the bottom in the comments. See ya.